now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 7.07 here on the 22nd day of April. O'Connor and Company here chugging along on a very busy morning. Thanks for joining us at 7.35. Ginny Gentles, our pal at Independent Women's Forum, will talk about Joe Biden's rewrite of Title IX. And then at 8.05, Mark Pauletta on the ongoing attacks of Clarence Thomas and his integrity and pressure on him to recuse himself. Boy, they really don't like Clarence Thomas. wonder why. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Morning, Good morning. Julie. I'm just letting you know right now, Joe DeGeneva, you're going to be here for the entire half hour. We've got a lot to talk to you about, so don't even want to okay. awkwardly ask Sounds you if good. you could stay for a second segment. I want to get into the first day of the Trump trial today and what we learned about jury selection last week. But real fast, before we get to that, we're still sort of fixated on the images that we saw from Columbia University where, where actual terrorist Hamas Nazis with literal Nazi-like tactics are showing their true, ugly, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, and violent colors. Is there a role for the Justice Department here? Because I, you know, last I checked, the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office went after parents who were agitated over COVID policies at their school board meetings. Why have we heard nothing from the FBI or the Justice Department about this outrageous behavior at Columbia? And and for the, that matter, where's the Attorney General of New York and the District Attorney of Manhattan when they're not going after the Trump, governor. where they've got a real problem on yep. their hands? Well, there is a straight line from Washington, D.C. to New York, from Merrick Garland to Letitia James to Alvin Bragg. And the, the answer is very simple. This is all politics. There is illegal activity going on in each one of those venues that you see around the country with police doing nothing about it where Democratic mayors are in office because they know that that is a death sentence for them politically to confront the anti-Semites. And so Merrick Garland has sold his soul to the devil. Uh, because he didn't get on the Supreme Court. He's a vindictive man. He's a man with a very long memory who hates everything that happened to him, and it has contorted his brain, his soul, and his moral compass into a twisted person who allows stuff like this to go on. Now, in the past, when the Justice Department had things like this occur, they had units and people that were capable of investigating this and if there were violations of the law, prosecuting them, they had intelligence operations for the gathering of data to find out about foreign influence. And make no, make, make no mistake about it, uh, as Julie was pointing out earlier, when you look at the tents and the accoutrements that go along with this and the funding, it is quite clear that these anti-Semitic rallies going on all over the country are funded by someone mm -hmm. and the possibility that they are funded by china or someone else is very very high and that is something that traditionally the fbi would be interested in to a fairly well and you might not know about it you might not hear anything about it but it would be investigated it would be being investigated right now under christopher ray and merrick garland i doubt that very much these students that are on the receiving end of this horrifying harassment. Um, mm -hmm. Do they have a Title VI case here? I mean, this lo looks like this is a violation of their civil rights. And not only do they have a case against the university, but as you mentioned, who, who who's the people who are funding this? Yes, let's get discovery. Let's file a couple. Where are the people who are willing to litigate this yep. on behalf of these Jewish students to file a lawsuit against Columbia against the people who are confronting them, preventing them from getting an education, physically assaulting them, uh, frightening them with threats, because that's what this is. These are classic threats prosecutions, which could be brought by a, uh, a, any normal DA, any local prosecutor. Also, these are federal cases, civil rights violations. There's just no doubt about it. Good. So there need to be some lawyers groups that need to, who have funding, conservative legal groups, and file some lawsuits, and they will be able to get discovery. And they, it's always difficult against group like, groups like this. But believe me, with all the ability we have to seize cell phones, get data off of those cell phones, subpoena business records, bank records, everything else from organizations, it's very easy to find out who's funding this operation if you want to. Mm -hmm. 
And there's certainly no stomach in the Biden administration to actually get to the bottom of that because, well, I think they probably already know. <laughs> they probably already know. It. <laughs> they are actually encouraging this, this activity by both indifference and by being being silent and basically condoning it. Joe, uh, today is the first day of the uh, trial in New York, what what the media is lazily and duplicitously calling the hush money trial. Uh, Based on what you saw in jury selection last week, uh, what have we learned and what are you expecting? We learned that the Salem witches had a better chance of getting a fair trial than (laughs) Donald Trump does in New York. (laughs) <laughs> That's about right. There you go. So we, we you is, can play. This is <laughs> this is the worst miscarriage of justice in the history of the American judicial system. And the reason I say that is we're in. I, I know Joe Biden doesn't know this, but we're in the 21st century. And in the 21st century, we were thought to have achieved a level of sophistication and knowledge that would render something like this in New York impossible. But in fact, we have devolved into a retributive society governed by a leftist, corrosive, nearly communist group of people led by Biden and Garland and others in the service to a radical philosophy. And part of that radical philosophy on the left is to stop Donald Trump. All we have to do is look at the campaign literature from Alvin Bragg, Letitia James, Joe Biden, and others. And you will see that from the time Donald Trump reannounced that he was going to try and seek the presidency in 2024, efforts were made to destroy him legally, personally, and financially. You have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to see how the system has been put against him. And that is what's going to happen in New York. All this nonsense about, well, having two lawyers is going to make it really tough on Alvin Bragg, having two lawyers on the jury. This is over. This is over. All you had to do was listen to the answers given by almost 50 percent of the potential jury pool that they hated Trump. They described it. How many of those people do you think that are on the jury lied to get on there? That's right. We don't know who they are, by the way, which, by the way, is an absolute. We have every right in the world to know who those people are where they work, who they voted for, and everything else. This anonymous jury thing in a case like this is absolutely outrageous. All right, we've got more to talk about with Joe DeGeneva about this first day of the trial of Donald Trump up in Manhattan, the ramifications, what's really behind it, and the politics of it, and a little bit more coming up in just a moment. First, though, at 7.15. Yeah. And, you know, I go back to the responsibility of Congress here mm-hmm. um, because had the Senate— actually gone through with the impeachment of Donald Trump. Hello. We would not be in this situation. And you- That's quite an admission there from Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal that the reason that we're going through these court trials here is because the Senate didn't go through with the impeachment conviction of Donald Trump, which, I don't know, sounds to me like like a smoking gun that these trials are completely political to damage his chances or preempt his opportunity to run for president since the impeachment didn't go through. I mean, that and so many other instances and evidence uh, suggest that this will get overturned on appeal, Joe. But that's not the point, because any appeal is going to happen, you know, a year after the conviction, which they're planning on hitting, you know, right around the Republican National Convention. Convention. Well, I think that's right without any doubt whatsoever. But the Democrats don't have any problem about being transparent about their abuse of the legal system. Remember, the rule of law is not a real thing to them. The rule of law is a mere incantation for Democrats that they use when they when it's to their benefit to do so. They don't believe in the rule of law. They believe in the rule of the mob. And all you have to do is look at Columbia University. The silence of this administration, the silence of the attorney general and everything else. Remember, it's the attorney general who started this. Attorney General Garland is the one who started the investigations of Donald Trump. He was the one who authorized the use of the massive resources of the FBI and others to go after Trump to get criminal indictments. So any notion that this administration doesn't know anything about this or doesn't doesn't care about it is absolutely absurd. 
This is, in fact, as Donald Trump has said from the very beginning, a rigged process designed to, quote, get him, and it's working. And to their credit, and I credit in quotes, the Dems and the corrupt federal law enforcement mechanism has worked beautifully to attain their goal. Mm. They now have him locked up in court for two months so he can't campaign anywhere. They have succeeded in election interference at the same time they have traduced and besmirched American justice. So, Joe, I was reading this weekend that there are, I think, one or two lawyers on the jury. Um, They selected these lawyers, and some people think that's a really bad idea. Others are saying uh, that that could work in Trump's favor because lawyers tend to think more logically. They actually look at the evidence. They dismiss emotional reasoning. What what are your thoughts on lawyers being on this jury, good or bad for Trump? Bad. And uh, listen, I've seen lawyers all over this country look like rabid dogs on television. So any notion that lawyers can be cool, calm, and collected, it's a rare breed these days. There are a few of us. Uh, we may be opinionated, but we can, we can be cool, calm, and collected and fair to the other side. The problem is everybody has a hidden agenda in New York. And no matter what they tell you, they're, they're not interested in justice in New York. If you can elect Alvin Bragg, if you can elect Letitia James, if you can elect the governor of New York, then you can be an unfair juror, and you're most likely to be an unfair juror, whether you are a lawyer or not. The fact that they're lawyers is almost irrelevant. I think that what it does is when you have a case in, an, in, in there should have been a change of venue. Everything begins from that basic rule. This case should not be happening at all in Manhattan. It should be in another jurisdiction. It should be in Staten Island some other borough, some other county in New York, but it isn't. It's where they know they will get a guilty verdict. It doesn't matter that there are two lawyers on the jury. Their presence is irrelevant. By the way, even Michael Avenatti pointed that out in that that, uh, MSNBC appearance gone wrong where he said this this entire thing is rigged. And Mm -hmm. just ask yourself if if these charges were brought in a courtroom in uh, Mobile, Alabama, would the jury there find the same thing? And that tells you everything you need to know. Speaking of that, we're told that Avenatti has actually been speaking with the defense, with the Trump team. He might come on as a witness for Trump against Michael Cohen. This seems like a segment on The View, Joe. (laughs) Well, it is. He might also be a witness against Stormy Daniels, who is also going to be a witness in the case because he was her lawyer. She sued him. She got him indicted. He's in prison, in part, for defrauding her. So talk about an interesting juxtaposition if he were to be called to testify. You know, in a case like this, where it is so bizarre and it shouldn't be in the courthouse anyway, someone like Avenatti might, ironically enough, bring some dignity to the proceedings. Oh, my God. <laughs> and with his, court, uh, with his jailhouse appearance. Joe, uh, let me just ask you, legally, the, it seems unfair and unconstitutional that this so-called gag order is keeping Trump from publicly criticizing the district attorney, the judge, or anybody else involved in the case. Mm-hmm. Yet at the same time... <laughs> Is this this is a tactic that's used against like mob bosses, right? Uh, because there could be potential violence against witnesses. Obviously, they're trying to treat Trump like he's a mob boss. But is there an argument? There are some people who are unhinged in our society, and they could react in a negative way if. Well, I don't even want to finish the thought. But is is there any legal basis to this gag order? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, this is ridiculous. If the judge were serious about wor- worrying about uh, negative reactions, he would shut up everybody. Why hasn't he silenced Michael Cohen? Why hasn't he silenced Stormy Daniels? Why has he only silenced Donald Trump? This is absurd. On its face, it is an unconstitutional gag order. He should have sequestered the jury, by the way. This jury is going to be going home every night after the, after the day's doings and be able to listen to and read about what everybody thinks about the case. This is insanity. Yeah, that is insane. You can't try a case like this the way this judge is trying this case. Mm-hmm. This, is, this judge, wants, he's going to direct a verdict of guilty by the manner in which he is trying this case. This is absurd. This is absolutely absurd. There isn't any way this should be happening. Hey, one of my... Just think about it. No sequestration. 
The jury goes home every night. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, when you go home tonight, I don't want you to read anything about this case, <laughs> see anything on television, or talk to anybody in your family about this case. Now, absurd. do you really think that's going to happen? Do you really think that's, that's the only good thing the president has going for him this week is that on Thursday, the Supreme Court is going to hear the argument in his immunity case, and the president's going to win that case. He's not going to get what he wants, absolute immunity, because that's not what the court's going to decide. They're going to say there is immunity. We're going to send it back for more hearings, and we want the judges to tell us on a full record what is the nature and extent of that immunity. Hmm. He's going to win in the Supreme Court. That's what he'll get this week. He won't get the ruling this week, but the oral argument is going to show he's going to win. My goal every Monday morning <laughs> is to ask a question that will get a reaction like that from Joe DeGeneva, and I consider this a win for the week now. Joe, you're the best. Thank you, my you friend. You are the best. It is God save the republic. <laughs> well, we can keep it.